Rage Vortex, the younger, angrier brother of Bladestorm, the distant cousin of Cyclone, and content demolisher. This build guide will teach you everything you need to know about making the maddest berserker there ever did be. Welcome! It's your friendly neighbourhood Badger here, and I'm back with the first of my build guides coming hot off the press in Expedition League. With the addition of so many new skill gems, it made sense that I try to bust one of them right open, and believe me, I have. Introducing the Rage Vortex Berserker, a spinning force of pure damage. Rage Vortex is a skill that sacrifices a portion of your current rage to send out a spinning copy of your blade. The more rage sacrificed, the bigger AoE and more damage you deal. Now, there are so many ways to build this skill. Two-handed, fire conversion, even cast on crit. But today we're focusing on a one-handed physical impale, due to some insane quality of life coming from the unique shield Red Blade Banner, coupled with Berserker's Ascendancy Point Warbringer. If we Warcry with below 25 rage, we gain up to our maximum amount instantly. The amount of synergy in the rest of the build is astronomical, but Future Badger will break it all down for you. Having downed most content on this character, I can safely say that this build is very budget friendly. On a 3x budget, this obviously is subject to change, you can complete T16 maps, and investing a bit more will get you powerful enough to tackle even the hardest of bosses. If you're a one button Andy, this build ain't for you, as it's basically a Warcry slam build without the slams. However, I found the active gameplay to be very engaging, balancing rage, exerted attacks, and the fastest sleep slam in the West. Oh, did I mention we don't care about mana problems at all because Rage Vortex costs life? In the next section, I'll go over everything you need to know mechanically about this build, and in the sections after, we'll break down the gear choices, passive skill tree, and ascendancies, and leveling. As always, the handy color bar is below for your easy viewing pleasure. Good luck with the build, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Now, this first section here, it might be a little bit lengthy, but definitely stick through it because this is really important to understanding all of the mechanics behind Rage Vortex. You definitely want to understand all of these mechanics because it's a really, really interesting skill, and it's going to mean that you're able to play the build better. So, Rage Vortex, I'll just quickly say what I said in the intro. Rage Vortex is a skill that sacrifices some of your rage to deal damage in a uh, big AoE circle as it travels through the map. If it starts to hit the same enemy multiple times, it slows down, and I'll showcase that very soon. And the more rage that we sacrifice, or the more the rage that we start with before we sacrifice, means that we're dealing more damage, and we have a larger AoE. This, coupled with a massive rage pool, uh, a very decent way of generating rage through War Cries and Red Blade Banner, uh, which is uh, using Warbringer here to generate max rage Together with Red Blade Banner, TLDR, Warbringer gets you rage per 5 power if you have less than 25 rage when you Warcry. And then Red Blade Banner means we have infinite power. So infinite power, infinite rage, but it just goes up to your full rage. You don't actually get infinite. That would be a little bit game-breaking to have infinite damage. Um, so that is how that all looks. Then we get a bunch of rage through Crave the Slaughter, Ride of Ruin. So as we have 95 rage, we have way too much damage. You will be able to see the difference. If I just put uh, Berserk here, um, we'll see the difference between uh, a no rage tooltip of Rage Vortex, 22,000, and then a full rage tooltip of uh, Rage Vortex, 78,000, and then with Berserk, goes up to just over 100,000. Uh, and that is calculating the initial hit. So what's that? what that is calculating is this tiny little spin here. If you don't have any rage, Rage Vortex looks pitiful like this. As Aphelion would call it, a little ballerina dance. So, it's, the gameplay is basically Warcrying, throwing out, and then, you know, Warcrying a couple of times, keeping an eye on your rage, Warcrying when you're almost running out, and then throwing again. You can still throw some small ones, you can see how small they get if you, if you do throw, you know, a couple of them in a row. Just get smaller and smaller, until you can no longer cast it. Yeah, like that, right? With full rage, I could probably just cast this, you know, a lot of times, and you can only have one out at a time. You can see there I'm spamming it, and only when I stop, it will actually start traveling. Now, the there's a lot of synergies with this, as I did say as well. The really big synergy, um, well, actually has a lot of synergies, is this skill uh, has a attack, AoE, duration, and melee tag. Now, the melee part is the really important part. 
What this does mean is that the entire attack counts as melee attack. This means not only the initial hit right here, but this vortex over there. So basically that's off screening right there. You can see the vortex just in the corner. Uh, but it's still dealing melee damage. So scaling any sort of melee damage will be hitting that. This does mean, and I even leveled with this for quite some time, if you wanted to play a two-handed version of this, you can use Namahu's Axe. Namahu procs uh, kind of like a Molten Burst on melee hit. So you can actually throw that away, it will hit the enemies, and the Molten Burst will proc on the enemies, and it's really, really strong. Um, the other uh, synergy, or couple of synergies, obviously we're using War Cries. I use three War Cries, Enduring Cry for Endurance Charges and Health, Intimidating Cry for Double Damage, literally 100% uptime. Now the reason here is Intimidating Cry, it only has two exerts. So let's say we're playing a normal attack, and you'd, you'd attack like this fast, right? You know, doof, 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 or not even that fast. You can only attack two times before you have to war cry again, and obviously, you have to wait for the cooldown. However, this skill will keep attacking for you, even though you've only attacked once. So this means, right here, it says two, we can attack once, well, once we have some rage. We can attack once, then it goes down to one exert, that's all of that is dealing double damage, then we can attack again. All of that's dealing double damage, and by the time that those are done, we definitely have time to intimidate and cry once again. Now, the third synergy with War Cries is actually Rallying Cry. Now, this one's a little bit of an uh, advanced tactic. Rallying Cry does give, um, uh, basically it gives more damage. Exerted attacks deal more damage per affected ally. So it counts allies and enemies in the range. Per affected ally, you grant 5% more damage. Now, right now we don't have any allies, but if I jump over, let's just quickly, you know, kill some enemies over here. I kill those enemies. I have Herald of Purity minions. Now, we are using Herald of Purity in the build, so if we war cry like that, they all get tagged by Rally and Cry, and we gain a ton more damage from Rage Vortex, which is just extremely, extremely strong. 20% uh, more damage to be precise. So, if we calculate all of the more multis, We've got Rage Vortex, which is dealing, um, uh, well, it's sacrificing 25% of my Rage. Let's say I had 100 Rage. 25% is sacrificing 20 Rage, uh, 25 Rage, to deal, uh, what is it? Sacrificing 25 Rage to deal 5% more damage per one Rage, so 25 times 5. 125% more damage from there. 100% more damage from Intimidating Cry. 20% more damage from Rally and Cry, that's already 245% more damage. We're then getting 50% more damage if you've sacrificed Rage recently with an Exerted Attack. Then we're also getting 40% more damage here. That all in total amounts to 335% more damage just from these mechanics. Now that's the top end. Obviously, as you're flying through a map, you know, you're not going to be always attacking with full Rage. You can have a look at the Rage down there as I'm, you know, running. You know, first attack's gonna be big, second attack's gonna be small, then maybe you get some more rage up, uh, and then you just keep going. Oh yes, I did forget about the, uh, I did forget about the, uh, 19% or 20% more da damage with attacks and 20% more attack speed from Berserk as well. All of that together, coupled with an Ancestral War Chief, amounts to some of the strongest synergies I've seen in a, <clears throat> quotation marks, melee skill like this one. Now, that's all I really have to say. The last thing I will mention is we're using Leap Slam with Life Tap. We don't care about mana. Rage Vortex costs mana. We've got a ton of attack speed. We're Leap Slamming like crazy, especially with all of our Rage up. Our movement is insane, as you can see through here. All I have to do is just this. Uh, and uh, that's, that's basically it. That's the build. That This is the build. This is how you play. And then you just... You just... That's it. That's... <laughs> Onto the, onto the budget build. <laughs> all right, time to talk about the budget gear and links. Now, I am gonna talk about all of the things I am including in this POB. I'm trying to be a little bit more um, inclusive of everything here. So I've actually, in all the item sets, I've got the early game, just a couple of, you know, uniques that I would suggest leveling with, and there's definitely more. Um, uh, leveling when you switch to Red Blade Banner. So the red blade switch, what you, what kind of stuff you will be using around like, let's say level 50. Uh, and then the budget version, then the non-crit version, uh, which is basically the more expensive version. Uh, and then the crit cluster version at the end. Now, 
To start off with, we're going to be talking about the budget, because I'm sure that's what you guys are going to be starting off with as well, unless you're rolling in that cash. And the budget is going to be a little bit like this. First of all, we're going to talk about the weapon. Now, this Wrath Nash Psychotic Axe right here is relatively decent. Um, it might be even a little bit more than budget, but you're just going to be looking for an axe that has similar stats. Now, you're not going to need the Crit Strike Multi or the Lightning Res on this thing, but you're just looking for uh, increased physical damage, any combination of increased physical damage, uh, flat physical damage, and attack speed. So, say you get a good increased physical damage and attack speed axe, you can craft flat on, you know, if you get good... Physical damage, uh, flat physical damage and attack speed, craft percentage on, and then, you know, as this axe right here, it's got good flat and percentage physical, so I crafted attack speed. The other good bases are a Siege Axe is probably the best other base that you're going to be looking for right here. Now, as I said, the only um, mandatory unique for this version of the build is Red Blade Banner. Now, Red Blade Banner, I, look, I guess it's not mandatory, but the quality of life that you're going to be experiencing from this shield is just absolutely insane uh, with the infinite power. With, with The increase of the Warcry cooldown recovery rate is very, very nice as well to get your Warcrys up. Now, everything else is just pretty budget. Now, that some of these things might be a little bit you know, more expensive than others, but they should be relatively uh, cheap. Uh, some of them I've just randomly crafted. Uh, through POB, like this one here, just life resistances. Body armor, you're just looking for life resistances. Gloves can either just be, you know, life resistance gloves, or the great one, the great old one's tentacles are also really good as well if you don't need resistances from the gloves. You're just getting a little bit more impale on hit with attacks right there as well. Uh, then you're going to be looking at the boots, you know, just move speed, life resistance if you can. Amulet, you know, life resistance and some flat physical. Uh, rings, same thing, life resistance, flat physical. Uh, if you have a little bit more in the budget, you can definitely get the vulnerability on hit ring there as well. That's going to give you a lot more damage uh, right there. And then belt, life and resistances. As you can see, really cheap and easy. Now, there are some uh, jewels that you will be looking for. Now, the very budget version of the build, uh, it's probably not going to be using a medium cluster. But uh, the other jewels that I've got here are basically just increased max life and impale enemies on hit with attacks. Then you can get any other type of, you know, additional stuff on there as well. Most of these I bought for 3 to 5 chaos each, right? So, you know, uh, increased damage with one-handed weapons, attack speed with staves. That's not even good at all, that one right there. Um, but, uh, you know, you can see relatively budget, right? Still hitting 1 million DPS right here, but that is also not even including Intimidating Cry, basically doubling the damage. Um, you know, the, some of the configurations might be a little bit too much because it is based on Bear's Girdle, which I'll talk about in the end game. But that's basically the budget uh, right there. The flasks themselves, uh, themselves are going to be really simple as well. No unique flask. We're going to be using a Seething Divine Life Flask of Staunching, a Perpetual Aquamarine Flask of Heat. Uh, you don't have to have it perpetual, but I would go, go an Aquamarine Flask of Heat, a Quicksilver Flask of Heat as well, just because you don't really ever want to be frozen a Granite Flask of Staunching, and I've also got a Quartz Flask of Heat there as well. Now, you can obviously change one of these heats, or even two of these heats, to maybe Poison or something like that. Uh, but one very quick thing that I will say, Ailment Immunity is not a huge thing on this build. However, every time we Warcry, we remove an Ailment. So the only real Ailment I care about is Freezing. When we're frozen, we can't Warcry to remove Freeze, but everything else we can Warcry to remove it. That includes Bleed, Poison, uh, corrupting blood, all of that kind of stuff. So that's really, really tasty. So the links themselves, let's just quickly talk about the links. Now, first of all, Rage Vortex is going to look a little bit something like this. Um, now, it is all red, but if you do find that you don't have enough Impale Chance, you do want to be using the Impale Gem itself. This is going to give you a ton of uh, chance to Impale. However, if you're about 90% chance to Impale or higher, you definitely don't want to use Impale because all of these other links are better. If you've only got a 5 link, um, if you want more survivability, you can definitely uh, go into Fortify and not use something like, I would say... Oh, it's actually really hard. Probably Rage, right? You wouldn't use Rage. But then, uh, you know, if you've got your 6 link, uh, definitely use Fortify in there. Or change out Impale for Rage or Fortify, depending on what you want, if you do need that Impale chance. We've got our main hand uh, support, so our uh, Weapon 1 support, Hero of Purity, Dread Banner, and Berserk. We've then got our War Cries, Enduring Cry, Intimidating, Intimidating Cry, and Rallying Cry. 
if you want and if you have enough mana, you can put Second Wind into this. Uh, it is going to give you... It doesn't actually give you more DPS, don't worry, guys. POB just looks at uh, DPS very weirdly in terms of cries. Uh, but that will just mean that you'll be able to use your war cries a little bit more, uh, you know, um, just a little bit more, basically. But it does mean that they're going to go from around about 19 mana to, I think, 33 mana each. So you're going to really need some mana to be able to do those ones. In the helmet, we've just got basically got a supporting, you know, a, a fourth link here that you can put whatever you want. But basically, just a Blood Rage, just use that whenever you want. And Ancestral War Chief, use that whenever you want. And a Portal Gem, really easy right there. Now, Leap Slam itself, you're going to be using Leap Slam, Life Tap, Culling Strike, and Faster Attacks. If you don't have Fortify in your main links, you want to be using Fortify instead of Faster Attacks. Um, so basically, Culling Strike right here, not, what, what am I doing? Faster Attacks, Fortify, right? Fortify, right? So I'm going to take that one off there, right there. You don't even really need Faster Attacks. So even if you've just got a three link, Leap Slam, Life Tap, Culling Strike is super nice. Culling Strike is an 11% more multi against bosses or anything like that. You Leap Slam them when they're on 10% health and you kind of just, you know, destroy them and it's super, super nice. And then lastly, in our uh, in our weapon two, we've got Maim, Flesh and Stone, and Blood and Sand. This puts at us at a total of 6% unreserved mana, which is 36 unreserved mana, which is enough to cast basically two war cries, but our mana will regen in the time that we're doing all of that as well. Uh, that's basically the links right there. That's uh, that's the budget version. If you've got any questions, hit me down in the comments below or come catch me on stream. Next, we're going to talk about the crit and uh, non-budget versions. Let's go for it. All right, the end game. Let's talk about it. Uh, we're not talking about the Avengers movie, unfortunately. We're talking about the end game of Rage Vortex. And right here, this is all of the gear that is on my character right now. Now, some of this is going to be more expensive than others, and potentially at the release of this build guide, because a lot of people are wanting this build guide, prices might even rise more. First of all, we're going to talk about the weapon. Now, everything's basically the same as what I said in the budget version. You're just looking for a good Siege Axe or a Psychotic Axe. Right here, I have a 627 DPS Siege Axe. This is too much, uh, and uh, I got very lucky crafting this. So... Any variation of a Siege Axe that has a good amount of attack speed, physical damage uh, right there is going to be totally nice. Now, you don't need the crit chance unless you're going for the full crit version, which is going to take even more currency investment. So any high rollers out there, you can go for the crit version. It's going to be, you know, weaker because uh, we're taking more damage and less life and all that kind of stuff. We weaker in terms of, you know, taking damage, but much stronger in terms of damage. So basically, the axe right there is this Siege Axe. You know, you can definitely... I got by, I did all content, most content in the game except feared, on a 500 DPS... No, 450 DPS Siege Axe um, right there as well, which, you know, was still a couple of Exalted Orbs, but uh, definitely cleared everything. Red Blade Banner, exactly the same. It's just sitting there, you know, doing its thing, giving you rage. The helmet itself... Now, this helmet is actually a really poor helmet, but it's an example of what is nice. Um, obviously you probably want an armor base, not an evasion energy shield base. However, you want life resistances and you want the enchant of Rage Vortex sacrifices plus 5% of rage. Now this is also not calculated into the damage calcs here as well. There's a lot of things in POB that aren't calculated into the damage calcs. So take the damage that you're seeing in POB very much uh, with a grain of salt. It is going to be more in game if you juggle everything correctly. Body armor itself, you're just looking for life, resistances, uh, right here for the non-crit version. Gloves, I'm still running with the great old ones tentacles. You can use some spiked gloves and craft them yourself if you want to, but uh, these are going to give you the chance to impale uh, enemies on hit with attacks, which is meaning that you're not going to have to use the impale gem itself. Boots, once again, life, resistances, move speed. Amulet, life, resistances, and physical damage to attacks. Rings, life resistances, physical damage to attacks, and one of the rings having vulnerability on hit. Very straightforward right here. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is Bear's Girdle. Bear's Girdle is best in slot, and probably the one of the best purchases you can make for this build. So this is giving you 6% increased physical damage per 10 rage. Uh, so when you, you know, use your rage vortex at 95, 100 rage, that's 60% increased physical damage. You then also are getting... 
5 to 12 physical damage to attacks, and plus 20 to maximum rage. Without Bear's Girdle, I sit on 75 rage. With Bear's Girdle, I sit on 95 rage. This means we're getting a ton more attack speed and move speed, attack damage. We're also getting a ton more sacrifice from Rage Vortex itself. Bear's Girdle is just absolutely astronomical. I bought this for three Exalted Orbs, but I do not think this is going to stay at three Exalted Orbs because of how little they are on the market. So if you're one of the first people watching this and you want to play this build and you've got the currency, um, you probably want to buy a Bear's Girdle. That's probably the best option for you, the best upgrade that you can make, and then, you know, getting a good Siege Axe. The last things I'll talk about here is the Thread of Hope. You're going to want a me sorry, a large Thread of Hope, not a medium, and I'll talk about that in the Passive Skill Tree uh, section when we talk about all of that. And you're going to be wanting a medium Cluster Jewel with Haunting Shout and Lead by Example. Um, now, things do change a little bit if we go to the Crit. Uh, now, Crit changes a little bit. I, you can use an Abyssus in the Crit if you would like to. And then you also want to use, you know, yeah, ex you know, Spiked Gloves. You can still use your, uh, your Great Old Ones Tentacles if you want to. And then the only other real thing that has changed uh, in the gear is, if we just quickly switch to the Crit Cluster version right here, is the Clusters itself. So you're going to be using a large Cluster with Feed the Fury, Fuel the Fight, and Martial Prowess, you know, they can change because the large cluster is not the big thing. However, on the medium clusters, you're going to want one with Mob Mentality and Provocateur, and you're going to want one with Haunting Shout and Provocateur. The last thing I'll talk about is the, is the Astral Plate. You're going to want an additional curse to then be able to also apply Assassin's Mark, and you're going to want attacks have uh, a plus two critical strike chance. This is going to mean that you're going to get a lot more critical strike in everything that you are doing. So that's basically everything right there on the uh, the gear itself. Now, in the skills, I'm just going to quickly talk about the crit version. They're all disabled just so they don't show up here or anything like that. But they're relatively the same. Uh, you know, Rage Vortex with all of the same links. You've got your main hand support, Herald of Purity, Dread Banner Berserk. It's all the same. Cries are the same. Uh, the support is the same in terms of just using an Assassin's Mark right there. That's the only difference if you've got the... Uh, Maven Orbed Assassins, uh, sorry, the uh, Maven's Orb Extra Curse right there. Then Movement, you're doing Leap Slam, Life Tap, Calling Strike, Faster Attacks once again. And then Flesh and Stone, Blood and Sand, Precision and Enlighten level 4. So it's a little bit more expensive to switch over to the crit. Not too much more, but you're getting a lot more DPS. This says 5 million right here, but this also isn't fully correct in terms of its 5 million because there's also a couple of other things, you know, if I if I uh, enabled all of these, we'd get a bunch more damage through things like uh, our Assassin's Mark, um, and uh, there's some also, also some other hit chance stuff happening somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where that's happening, but uh, with switching everything around, you do get around about, yeah, oh, that's right, yeah, of course it's, um, it's uh, precision. You get around about 99% hit chance. You get close to about 8 million DPS here. Basically double that with Intimidating Cry, 16 million. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. That's the high end, obviously. Not everything is going to stay at 16 million because of how Rage Vortex functions. That's all I really have to say there. There was a lot of information. I hope I covered it all. Once again, if you've got questions, comments, or come catch me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. Next, we're going to move on to the passive skill tree because once again, there's a lot to talk about right there. All right, passive skill trees. Now we're going to start with the budget, the very budget without the Thread of Hope, then talk about the Thread of Hope, uh, and then we're going to also talk about the uh, two versions of the end game, the non-crit and the crit as well. But first of all, we're just going to quickly talk about the Ascendancy. Uh, now the Ascendancy itself is pretty self-explanatory. You've got your Crave the Slaughter and your Ride of Ruin for your Rage, you've got your Warbringer for your extra damage and your Generation of Rage, and then you've got Aspect of Carnage as a soft core meme right there for more damage. In the crit version of the build, you may want to actually go Flawless Savagery, because you do get 20 to 30 physical damage if you've dealt a critical strike recently, and some massive crit multi. Now this is probably better to take than Aspect of Carnage, if you are growing the crit variant, so I would definitely take this one right here. But first of all, the no thread end game uh, build. Right before we jump into that, uh, if you do need the leveling process itself, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 points. Uh, you can see the outline right there. Around about level 60 is when you'll start switching into the actual build itself, but we'll talk about the leveling a little bit later. So let's talk about the no thread end game. 
So it's pretty self-explanatory. We are taking a lot of Warcry nodes. Now, I would say that all four of these uh, kind of clusters right here of Warcry stuff are mandatory. Uh, in the crit version, you're not going to be taking deep breaths, although it is a little bit of a waste. Uh, not, not a waste, a little bit of a sacrifice to, you know, basically be able to switch to the crit version and deal a ton more damage. But uh, all of these Warcry nodes are really, really, really strong. You've then got things like Vanquisher to crush enemies. You've got, uh, you know, Anointing Slaughter. Uh, Resolute Technique, because we're not going the crit variant, so we don't have to worry about accuracy. Uh, and then basically just picking up a bunch of Axe Nodes here as well. Well, just basically these Axe Nodes, these Axe Nodes, and some Impale stuff right here. We get a bunch of our Impale Chants from these two wheels right here. And then a couple uh, of Impale Nodes up here. Then some plus Max Rage here from Berserking. And that's about it. If you do happen to find uh, a Thread of Hope or buy a Thread of Hope, a large Thread of Hope, you can then switch to the Thread of Hope version. Everything else is the same, um, other than uh, just a couple of other extra points here and changing a couple of things. Now, this large Thread of Hope is amazing. You can hit five different notables, which saves you quite a few travel points through here. And I've got one small little uh, Axe Damage node right here just to cap off my uh, Impale Chance in my build. So you're going to be hitting out of the Gladiator. It means you can save a 5% uh, life point right here, but you don't really need to do so. But these are the big ones. Hatchet Master is really good. Plus 5 Rage, Attack Speed, and Increased Damage. We then get at Panopticon, which means we get 50% increased buff from our Ancestor Totem, our, protector, our Ancestral Protector. We then also hit Swift Skewering, which is really nice for Impale. We also hit Harvester of Foes, which is really, really nice for Impale with Axes as well. So an amazing Thread of Hope right there. Uh, that's basically it for all of that. Now the Crit Tree starts to come a little bit... Uh, it, it, it changes a little bit. Basically, you path a, more through this area to pick up Eagle Eye. And then you're also going to be passing through down under here to pick up this Fella of Foes. Now, I was very surprised when uh, I realized that Fellow of Foes is almost giving 20% more damage with the Crit Strike Multi it gives, the Accuracy Rating, and the Attacks. Now, you could anoint this if you want, but then you don't get the anoint of the Onslaught on Kill from Slaughter. I would probably more so anoint Fellow of Foes, because it is just that big, and you then save a few points here, and you can spend them in other places. But you can also travel. It is a level 99 tree right here, so that's probably the play to not anoint this. And then do the travel right there to be uh, level, let it be level 93 in total. That's about it. Apart from the cluster, we talked about the cluster in the gear section. But Feed the Fury, Martial Prowess with Fuel the Fight at the back here. Mob Mentality, Provocateur on one. And then Provocateur and Haunting Shout on the other. Uh, and then everything else is pretty much the same through all of there. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, oh, whoopsies. I didn't even, I didn't even select it here. You go like this one right here. Uh, the Flawless Savagery doesn't look like it's actually figured in the calcs here. You've crit recently. Uh, oh, it definitely looks like an Aspect of Carnage is uh, a lot more damage anyway. But you are getting more crit chance through here if you uh, do go the Flawless Savagery. So, yeah, a little bit less damage and uh, more crit chance uh, and crit multi. Uh, or you can just be a softcore meme mobile down here with Aspect of Carnage. That's all I will say on this regard. The last thing we're going to talk about is the leveling process. Uh, now I'm going to go over it fairly quickly because it is self-explanatory, but I am going to run through the types of gens that you're going to be picking up as well as some leveling uniques you can use as well. So let's jump into that right now. All right. Now right before we just talk about a couple of the steps, the first thing I'm going to say is... It is fairly self-explanatory if you played an attack build before. But there are a couple of things you should know. Very quickly, some uh, very easy starting weapons are obviously going to be something like a Screaming Eagle or a Last Resort Nailed Fist. Duresso Salute and uh, the Magnate are actually two items that I carried all the way to T16 maps without even realizing I still had them on. So, you know, they're decent for attack builds. Uh, and then the other thing is the Rustic Sash Recipe. Now, this is something that you're going to be using a lot if you don't have much of a budget to purchase unique weapons. But apart from that, I would suggest uh, just uh, going to the list of unique axes on the wiki, finding basically probably the two hand of ax axes, limb split into wide swing, into reaper's pursuit, into cauterizer, you know, into Calm's primacy. All of these, um, these two handed weapons are going to be really nice until you do get the red blade banner and switch over uh, in your cruel lab. But the rustic sash recipe is very simple. You can take any item uh, or any weapon, I should say. 
So say for example, this superior wood splitter, a level 13, uh, you can sell that to the vendor coupled with a rare rustic sash. It can be magic, but rare is better to give a higher roll. Then lastly, a blacksmith's whetstone. This is gonna give back a, uh, a the same weapon, but with a physical damage roll on it. Um, and you can take that one from the vendor right there, and then you can just level with that. So if you're a level 13, you can do a wood splitter. And then every, I'd say, six to eight levels, you probably want to get the highest base that you can from the vendor. So go to whatever vendor is going to be selling Great weapons. Series. You know, in Act 6 is Tarkley. You'd pick up a, uh, probably a Labris or something like that. Do the same thing and get a better weapon. That basically carries you through. Those. That's all you need for the weapons. If you find your damage lacking, this is what's probably, this is probably not, what you're doing so you should probably uh jump onto that one right there now in the pob itself i do just have a couple of things to talk about now you can't really see that on the screen there you know what how about i make that a little bit bigger there for you let's just zoom this right up here this is in the notes section of the build guide itself and it's fairly basic but it will tell you the outline of what you should do so in Act 1, you're going to be starting with Splitting Steel. Now, you will have to use either another character to purchase or get from someone else, a friend, or just, you know, on the trade market itself, but it'd be the cheapest thing possible to buy. Splitting Steel with Onslaught and Chance to Bleed is going to be your links right here, and you can pick up necessary supports and auras as well as War Cries for later, like your War Browner, Intimidating Cry, Enduring Cry, Leap Slam, Blood and Sand. When you reach level 12, you want to switch to Shattering Steel. It has way more damage than Splitting Steel, but once again, you'll have to get that outside of Marauder because it doesn't actually get that one on Marauder, I'm fairly certain. And you can use for Vitality, you can use Vitality for more survivability if you do want. Act 2, you're just going to be very quickly picking up Herald of Purity, Flesh and Stone. Once you beat Fidelitis, you can also pick up faster attacks, either via Leap Slam or your main hand attacks, it's up to you. When you get to Act 3, about midway through Act 3, you're going to fight Gravicious, and Gravicious is going to uh, mean that you want to switch to Blade Storm at level 28. You're going to be using Blade Storm, Onslaught, Melee, Physical Damage, and Ruthless. Uh, that's going to be your links right there. And then you're going to be switching between Blood and Sand Stance to obviously for clear and boss damage there as well. You can also pick up Rage Vortex at the same time and start leveling that one. Now, once again, remember to always upgrade your weapons with the Rustic Sash recipe. Uh, it's really, really, really strong. You should definitely do so. Uh, and then the last couple of things, Act 4 and onwards, just keep picking up the gems that haven't been mentioned here, but are in the skill section. Uh, and, you know, level that when you do have the links. And then about level 50 to 55, you should be able to switch to Rage Vortex with Red Blade Banner and your first two Ascendancy points. So lastly, we'll just quickly look at the tree right here, and I'll show you the points. So you'll be coming, first of all, at level... Uh, sorry, the first 20 points, you'll be coming right out of the Marauder, picking up life, a little bit of accuracy, uh, and then into butchery right here for two-handed weapons, and then jumping back up through here for some dexterity. This early dexterity and intelligence from here and the dexterity here is just going to cover you through everything you do need. Moving on to 40 points, you're probably going to be having your first ascendancy point right here. I like to take Crave the Slaughter because I don't like to switch into a Cruel Lab because Crave the Slaughter is just going to give us a lot more speed and honestly it's going to be a bit quicker uh, leveling with Cra uh, Crave the Slaughter and Splitting Steel or Bladestorm until we get our Cruel Lab. But basically you're coming down through here, picking up Resolute Technique, Barbarism, and then coming down and picking up Impale. 60 points, you're probably going to have Cruel Lab by now and Warbringer and this is where you start to switch over so you start to pick up all of these Warcry nodes right here. Deep Breaths, Escalation, uh, admonisher and then into bravery right here then switching to 80 points we start to flesh out the rest of the life the impale uh, and some more damage and lastly finishing with 100 points uh, then you're just basically full tree without the last little bits over here and the cluster jewel itself hopefully that helped you all thank you so much for watching this build guide i know it was a lot to get through but if this helped you if you're going to play this build or if you've already been playing this build and you're liking it please let me know in the comments down below uh, I'll try and answer as many questions as uh, as you guys ask or anything like that. If there's, you know, anything you need, uh, you know, sorted out or uh, understood, come catch me live on Twitch as well at twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. Last thing I will say, hit that sub button. It means the most to me. Um, that's, it's just, yeah, subbing is awesome and I'm trying to hit 50,000 subs by the end of Expedition League. So if you want to help me with that, I think we're like almost 36,000 by now. If you want to help me out, I'll be releasing a lot more build guides. Uh, one per week, hopefully, until BPL, which is coming, and that's all I have to say. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I might end the video with, you know, maybe a couple of endgame fights of kind of the semi-budget gear, so if you want to check that out, check that out. If not, catch around. See you later. I'll do
not do this yet. Thank mm -hmm. you. 